ambassadors served in several world capitals, including Beijing, Lima as ambassador, and in Colombo as high commissioner. She was the deputy chief of mission of India to Moscow. Ambassador Rao has a master's degree in English literature and is also a published poet. Her collection of poems, Rain Rising, was published by Ruba. I can go on and go on about um, Ambassador's accomplishments, but in the interest of time, I will be very brief. But before I end, I want to introduce and welcome Ambassador Rao's husband, Sri Sudhagar Rao, who is here with us today. <laughs> Mr. Rao, who himself is a distinguished civil servant, retired as the Chief Secretary of Government of Karnataka recently. Ladies and gentlemen, with that note, please join with me to welcome Her Excellency Ambassador Nirubama Rao. Dr. Shambhu Balik, Mr. Binoy Thomas, Dr. Renuka Mishra, Mr. Kumar Singh, Dr. Walter Anderson, Dr. Elisa Ayers, and all the numerous friends and well-wishers who have gathered here to welcome me and my husband this evening. It is indeed a pleasure to be here with you this evening. I recognize many old friends and familiar faces in the audience. It is good to be back. The warmth of your welcome truly touches my heart. I feel I am not far from home. Sixteen years ago, in October of 1995, when I left Washington, D.C., the world was a different place. India still seemed, at that time, to be many, many miles away. That is not the case anymore. Every little town in the United States has an Indian-American family or an India connection. There is much more interest in India. Our relationship with the United States has become a full-fledged partnership that has caught the attention of the world. I have kept in touch with this country over the years, and the friendship and the affection I have for you and the United States, the country of your adoption, and in many cases now, the country of your birth, is deep and enduring. You came here in search of your American dream, and you have found it in the soil of this country. The fact that you were equipped with the solid skills imparted to you by your Indian birth and upbringing was of particular significance, indeed of critical importance. In many ways, you are what you are because of the wellsprings of Indian culture and resilience that you possess, as well as the spirit of innovation, ingenuity, and enterprise that America symbolizes. You have contributed and played a significant role in crafting the United States-India partnership, this strategic partnership between two of the world's leading democracies, this defining relationship that has the capability to impact the destiny of the 21st century. I recall particularly your role in the successful realization of the India-US Civil Nuclear Agreement and the zeal and the enthusiasm and unstinted support you provided to the passage of the deal in the United States Congress. In the true sense, you hewed wood and drew water, and the results are there for all of us to see. Your accomplishments and achievements as a community have caught the imagination of this country, and indeed of the world. This is because of the reputation you have established for discipline, for diligence, and the determination to succeed, qualities that are worthy of emulation, while at the same time never casting off your cultural moorings in India and your love for what India has stood for. So the Indian-American 
amalgamates the old and the new worlds in one in a very worthy and compelling blend that makes us proud. It has been aptly said that we have just explored the edges of the potential that exists in the India-US partnership. The best is yet to be. And this partnership should encapsulate within itself another partnership, that between India and the Indian-American community to fashion and to craft an even bigger and better relationship between our two countries, a partnership that helps people on the ground, that explores new horizons in agriculture, in health, in education, energy, technological innovation, trade and business, and communication. You can play a crucial role in interpreting India's priorities to your American brethren. You can be that bridge of understanding and friendship between India and the United States. India today stands on the cusp of great change. It is growing fast. It is a front-ranking world economy. Its democratic traditions are strong and enduring. And its management of diversity, its pluralism, its respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms makes it a truly stand-out country. Our vision is to deliver the benefits of development to the smallest village in the country, to connect it with the rest of the world, as indeed advances in telecommunication are doing today, to build more schools, hospitals, roads, bridges, and public transport, to empower our women with education and health and leadership skills, to mitigate disease, to light up those homes that do not have electricity, to keep our children in school, and to build more high, higher educational institutions and vocational training centers, too. <laughs> to do all this, we need to keep our country open to ideas, to capital, to technology, and to innovation. We need to ensure security for our citizens and to keep our cities and communities safe from the threat of terrorism that has blighted so many innocent lives. We are working and will continue to work for a peaceful neighborhood to increase connectivity and to promote trade and tourism. We are proud of the fact that we are a peace-loving country and that the rest of the world sees us as such. I believe that India and the United States share a concordance of views on how we must work together to build a stronger partnership that can help us realize the goal of a better and brighter tomorrow for our people who live across the wide expanse of our two countries. India's engagement with the United States has at its core the need to make a difference to the lives of our people a difference for the better. So if one may borrow a line, friends, never stop thinking about tomorrow when it comes to the India-US partnership. I have just arrived in the United States and I'm beginning my ambassadorial tenure here. I am so glad that we are meeting at this time and your enthusiasm and goodwill will inspire me as I begin my American journey. I know I have your support and I value it greatly. Thank you, and God bless you all. Now let me present our governor's citation to the ambassador. The state of Maryland, from the governor of the state of Maryland, Her Excellency Ambassador Nirupama Rao, September 18, 2011. Her Excellency Ambassador Nirupama Rao, one of the finest diplomats India has produced, who has served her country with great distinction throughout her illustrious career, including the position of Foreign Secretary. During her tenure as India's top diplomat was outstanding, 
she oversaw several high level bilateral visit by us and indian leaders including president obama's historic trip to new delhi november 2010 during a previous stint as a minister at the embassy of india in washington dc she worked tirelessly to strengthen india us relation maryland is honored to join with the indian american community in welcoming her excellency nirupama rao as the new ambassador of the republic of india to the united states now therefore martin omali governor of the state of maryland do hereby proclaim september 18 2011 as a special day of tribute to honor her excellency ambassador nirupama rao in maryland and do commend this celebration to all of our citizens by governor martin omali lieutenant governor anthony brown and the secretary of state john mcdonald thank you